Week 16 in the NFL. Happy holidays, everyone. All right, and there's Lamar Jackson, a likely NFL MVP. He's led his team to 10 straight wins. Their last loss came against today's opponent, the Cleveland Browns. Now, Odell Beckham, you know you got money when your vehicle hood ornament is yourself. <laughs> OBJ, <laughs> OMG. Let's hope the Browns' offense looks as good as his car. Ooh, there is Devlin Duck Hodges. His first loss last week was four interceptions. Could he be on a short leash? Could we see Mason Rudolph today? Well, here we got Le'Veon Bell of the New York Jets wearing Pittsburgh Steeler colors. Probably wish he was there. He's had a tough year so far, and I think that will continue against his Pittsburgh defense today. Everyone, Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah. I'm James Brown. Welcome to the NFL Today presented by G. There is a lot to sort through on this big football weekend. So here are the Week 16 headlines. With Christmas just a few days away, yesterday's slate of games saw some early gifts unwrapped by Deshaun Watson, Tom Brady, and Jimmy Garoppolo as they guided their teams to much-needed wins that helped their playoff positioning. Steelers fans are hoping their old friend Le'Veon Bell doesn't deliver any cold to their playoff hopes today as he takes on his former teammates from Pittsburgh at MetLife. Now, there will be no mistletoe on the field today in Cleveland as Lamar Jackson and the Ravens look to avenge their Week 4 loss to the Browns and keep their impressive season rolling towards the number one seed. And speaking of number one seeds, it is still a wide open race for the top spot in the NFC. With their win last night, the 12 and 3 Niners are currently number one, but the Seahawks, Packers, and Saints all have a chance at the overall one seed. The Rams lost to the Niners, clinched a playoff berth for the Vikings. The Cowboys hold the NFC Eastly with a huge showdown against the Eagles today, and we'll get into that a little bit more later in the program. Meanwhile, over in the AFC, Houston and New England wrapped up division titles with wins yesterday, joining KC and Baltimore, who clinched earlier. The Bills and Steelers hold the wild cards, while Lamar and the Ravens could lock up the top seed and home field throughout the playoffs with the win today. They're also riding a 10-game win streak, and they've earned the right to do just a little talking. Say something now. Cowboys. We don't fear nobody. Ah! 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 So we just covering all day. Hey, that's what we do. That's what we do. I want to play defense right now. It's all good at the end of the day. Hey, you unbelievable. You unbelievable. Give us the ball back. Hey, hey y'all the realest mugs in the league. No one wants to come to Baltimore, and no one wants to play us. Who's got it better than us? And here inside Studio 43, alongside my colleagues, Phil Sims. Glad you're back healthy, buddy. Good Thank to you. see you again. Of course, Coach Bill Cower. Nate Burleson back from uh, Monaco, I believe, where he was calling his title. <laughs> and, of course, Boomer Esiason. Phil, we are running out of words to describe it. But Lamar and the Ravens, top-ranked scoring offense, continues to put on the show every week. Well, you better come up with some more words because mm. it's going to keep on rolling down there in Baltimore. I'll tell you why it's going to keep rolling. Because they are loaded with young guys on the offensive side. Look at this. The last two years, all the starters that have been drafted to the offense of the Baltimore Ravens. Of course, Lamar Jackson, two tight ends, three starting offensive linemen, a free agent. And then they got Marquise Brown to put it over the top. And there is Eric DaCosta, the guy in charge of that draft, took over for Ozzie Newsom. And, man, he has built a football team and an offense. Lamar Jackson throwing the football better down the field. And his running changes this offense to something we have never seen before in the NFL. That's why it's so hard. A power runner in Mark Ingram that gets tough yards. So that's really important. And when you, and when you look at this offense between the unique formations, the personnel, all the movement, 
I think you understand why I say they're going to keep getting better. You know, talking about getting better, how about this defense? Their last time they lost a game was to the Cleveland Browns. They gave over 500 yards. But what did they do? They'd gone out and got Marcus Peters, Matt Judon. You know more Eric Weddle, it's Earl Thomas. And you're talking about a team that blitzes and plays man-to-man, man-to-man with Jimmy Smith, Marlon Humphrey. And we talked about Marcus Peters. And who's been a coordinator of all that? Wink Martindale. He's taken his defense, his complimented an offense. That guy right there, they blitz more than anybody in the National Football play League. They play man-to-man. They're in your face. Matter of fact, we'll do a little eye vision on that next week uh, later on in the show. We'll talk and uh, break it down a little bit more. Can't wait. Yeah, and on the flip side, the Cleveland Browns, the team that I picked to win the AFC you know they've been struggling. And listen, you know that Baker Mayfield is starting to feel the pressure figuratively and literally. I mean, he's been sacked 34 times. He's been hit 52 times. They acquired Odell Beckham, and he was supposed to be the ultimate insurance policy for this team. And speaking of insurance, I've seen more Baker Mayfield commercials than I've seen Baker highlights. <laughs> <laughs> and his play has been the opposite of progressive. So they got to get things going, at least try to get some momentum going into next season. You know what? The Baltimore Ravens recognized they needed a change, and they went through and You went through the draft and everything else, and then they handed that offense over to Lamar Jackson. I give John Harbaugh a lot of credit oh. for having the guts to do what he did, and it has really worked out for them. On the other side, I said it in week one, and I'll say it in week 16. Freddie Kitchens was the wrong head coach for this football team. There's too mm. many personalities. And don't forget, Miles Garrett torpedoed this team with his actions against the Pittsburgh Steelers on Thursday night. That's why they are not going to the playoffs. Good point. All right, hey, fellas, and for more on this intriguing matchup, let's go out to Cleveland. Welcome in Mr. Tony Romo. Hey, Tony, Lamar Jackson certainly has earned the spotlight, but how about Mark Ingram and his impact on the Ravens' O? Well, they go hand in hand, but I'll tell you, Mark Ingram... You know, for a running back who's just turned 30, he's downhill, he's fast, he gets to the edge, and explosive. You want, they almost have these pieces set. Like, if you wanted a guy who's behind this offensive line and the way they run the ball, you want a downhill runner, fast, aggressive, one-cut guy. And then you want a guy who can catch the ball out of the backfield. And that's Mark Ingram. He's done everything for this team. And the crazy part is he's still second on that team in rushing. It's crazy. But they beat you a lot of different ways. It's going to be really hard to beat this team in the playoffs. And, Tony, as you heard the guys here in the studio talk about expectations, were extremely high for Baker Mayfield and the Browns. Uh, Nate Burleson talked about that, what his early season thoughts were. Give us your assessment about Baker's challenges. Well, I think the biggest challenge for any quarterback is just improvement from year to year. I think sometimes it can make it difficult when you have a successful rookie year because year two, you expect things to be just like that. But all of a sudden, you lose one offensive alignment. All of a sudden, a little scheme change happens. And now all of a sudden, it's like, whoa, it's a little different than the year before. I expect Baker to assess that this year and have a big offseason. And really, you just got to keep improving as a quarterback. Your team's going to go different ways every year. Your job is to keep getting better so you can overcome come those kind of changes year in year out hey tony thank you so much for your insight and uh, we're looking forward to you and jim with the call of the game today all right buddy now for more news and notes from around the league including freddie kitchen's future with the browns let's welcome in our nfl today insider jason lock and Fora. kitchens is in limbo jb with the browns still unsure of their direction for 2020 if they do hire a new head coach several sources pointed to urban meyer as a strong candidate Myers very close to owner Jimmy Haslam from his time at Ohio State. The Browns have considered college coaches in the past. They may be Myers' best shot in the NFL. Ravens offensive coordinator Greg Roman will interview for multiple head coaching jobs next month, I'm told. Roman's work with likely MVP Lamar Jackson as owners and GMs intrigued by his offense. Can't help but wonder what he'd be able to do with someone like Cam Newton. And the Raiders will explore other QB options this offseason. Those who know John Gruden well tell me he's ready to see if he can upgrade from Derek Carr primarily through the draft. Gruden's fascinated by dual threat QBs. He should have two of the top 15 picks he loaded up on Alabama players last year. Maybe it's two a time in Vegas and boom, no Derrick Henry for the Titans. You today. know what? I like two a time in Vegas. That sounds pretty good. But how about Merry Christmas from OBJ? Look at those pair of kicks right there. He's wearing today in pregame warm up for the Browns as they get ready to host the Baltimore Ravens in that 10 game win streak. Coming up on the NFL Today. With Christmas just around the corner, the Steelers hope old pal Le'Veon Bell doesn't turn into the Grinch and put a dent into their postseason hopes. I think it'd be half that, you know, be happy to see me and you still love me and half that, you know, hate me and despise me. The holidays are prime shopping season, so who's in the market for a new quarterback in 2020? 
It's a big weekend in the NFC playoff race, and with the division titles still on the wish list, the guys will discuss which teams are likely to deliver early gifts to their fans. All that and more when the NFL Today returns. The NFL Today is presented by the Jeep Big Finish event. in the year with a great deal. Time now for Golden Moments brought to you by McDonald's. Just be ready. Big things coming. Big things coming, man. Maybe on Bell. He has nowhere to go. He actually loses a yard. Obviously, things are not all sunny and roses and stuff right now. That's a loss of four. Nowhere to go. Not quite the numbers he's used to. Le'Veon Bell went bowling. This after being ruled down for Sunday's game with the flu. So the optics are not good. The bigger surprise, I'm rolling 251 off the flu. Career high. Steelers, Jets. The I guess the Le'Veon Bell revenge game, if you will. I think it'd be half that, you know, be happy to see me and half that, you know, hate me. I don't communicate with him. He's a New York Jet. Speaking of ringing the bell, right, John Nate? So Le'Veon Bell will certainly be looking to put his stamp on today's matchup against his former squad. Yeah, he'd like to. You know, there's a lot of why, who's to blame for Le'Veon Bell not having a big year with the Jets? It's everybody. It's Le'Veon Bell and the Jets. First off, he set out last year. He didn't go to off-season workouts. He didn't carry the football in preseason. How can you get in running shape when you set out a year if you don't run some in the preseason? So just these last three or four weeks, he looks like the guy that I thought he might be. Now, if you're the Jets and Le'Veon Bell, he is a big running back. You need to give him multiple carries, about 20 a game, mm -hmm. so he can wear you down and use that size to fall forward. The Jets have not done that. If they want to keep him for next year, they're going to have to change their blocking on offense. Well, I'll tell you, Pittsburgh has moved on from him. They all have moved on also from Antonio Brown. Ben has not been healthy this year. They have become a defensive juggernaut, talking about T.J. Watt, who has not certainly led the way there. But when you look at this football team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they got there because of that. And you certainly watch him. James Conner is the guy that is going to replace Le'Veon Bell. And he yep. went to the Pro Bowl a year ago. So you don't think that he will be fired up today to going against Le'Veon Bell on the other side and say, you know, who is the best runner? <laughs> right. With all of those reasons, wow. right? James Conner. Of course, Adam Gase trying to use Le'Veon Bell correctly. The money that Le'Veon Bell has paid. The fact that he hasn't had a 100-yard rushing game this season. For all of these reasons, doesn't it make sense for Le'Veon Bell going up against his former head coach, Mike Tomlin, to have the game of the season? Why not use Le'Veon Bell like a bell cow so he can have <laughs> the best revenge of the weekend? You know, good luck with good luck. that. You know, here's the thing. The Steelers are the fourth-ranked overall defense, and Coach said they're a defensive first team. So one of the things that I'm going to be watching today is going to be watching Sam Darnold and how he deals with this defense. I do not think that Le'Veon Bell is going to have a great day. I agree with Phil 100% in his assessment that this defense is going to be going after Le'Veon Bell. You no, know, he they probably feel like he left them out in the lurch last year, and they want to extract a little bit of revenge. And I also believe that, yes, you're right, uh, Duck Hodges is going to be on a short leash today. First interception, he's going to be out of there. Remember this moment. Yes. Boomer agreed with me. Yes. Whoa, like that. significant. We'll mark that bad boy yes. down there. All right, folks. And we will have our eyes on that contest coming up at the top of the hour right here on CBS. Meanwhile, a trio of games were played yesterday, Coach, resulting in key wins towards playoff seeding for the Texans, the Patriots, and the Niners. And in Foxborough, it was a record 11th straight AFC East title for the Patriots. And you look at the New England Patriots, it was really that last drive to find who they've become. They have become now a, a team that they got their back to running the football, and that sets up the play action. And you see right here the Julian Edelman. So they ran the ball 35 times. They had 33 pass attempts. That's who they are. It complements their, their defense. And you talk about right there, Sony Michelle had 96 yards. And you know what they did? Look at it. Landon Roberts. That's a linebacker playing fullback. They lost James Devlin. So they got back to doing what they have been known to do. Run the football, set it's up to play action, and I think they got a little bit of an identity last night. And I think it's going to bode them well going into January. Yeah, run the football hard, a little misdirection to do what? To set up their defenses with the strength of their football team. And you kind of saw it yesterday during the game. You got good cover guys. You know you got a mobile quarterback. You got to make sure you don't let him run. And they do that. New England, the best secondary, I still think, in the NFL. 
Four man rush, nobody opened, can't block them, sack Josh Allen. Then the game on the line, what do you do? You trust your defensive backs, you blitz everybody at Josh Allen. No time and nowhere to throw the football. You know, Phil, I don't know how you feel about this, but I, I think that Josh Allen's gotten better as the season gone, oh, has no. gone on. Now, he didn't play that great against Baltimore a few weeks ago, but he is a big, strong, he's got a Howard Spirit like uh, for an arm, as they were saying last night. But you watch that little quarterback sneak play last night where he ended up <laughs> moving around and getting the first down. I think the Buffalo Bills have the next coming of Jim Kelly. I think they have some that they can finally build around, get excited about, and certainly he's that guy who is starting to show that he can play in the NFL at a very high level. He still has to work on a few things. His accuracy is a little bit off. I'll, I'll tell you that, and I think it's because of the, uh, the strength of his arm. But he's a kid that I think is going to lead the Buffalo Bills for the next 10 years. Yeah. Hey, the late game was a tough one as well, too. Rams and 49ers. That's right. It was a good NFC West matchup. And you look at that game, it came down to the final moments. Tied at 31, that last drive, it pretty much showed us that the 49ers can win in tough ways. Under two minutes left, tied at 31, third and 16, ball over the middle. This is Kendrick. Born and it's fitting because we're starting to see their born identity like Matt Damon. And here it is, big time throw down the middle. Emmanuel Sanders, it's a little bit of a broken coverage, and they take advantage. And they're in position to win the game, and they're as good as gold when it comes to this situation. I think this is a big message to the NFL because if you're playing in the playoffs, we know that we will be in close games. If you're working your way into moments like this, and we've seen the 49ers time and time again come out on top in close games. And they have played one of the toughest schedules in these last month that you could possibly play and they've played a different ways we saw the shootout in new yep. orleans right now jimmy garoppolo is playing as good as any quarterback is we know how that defensive front is and we know how the offensive line how much they want to run the football yep. i think it's the most complete team in the nfc mm -hmm. you know you talk about jimmy garoppolo how would we see it in the locker room he's got some cred now yeah. You know, after that game, a couple games where he's kind of brought the team from behind. But especially when you do it in the last drive like he did yesterday, <laughs> it's got to raise his confidence, give everybody totally. confidence. The 49ers are a running football team. We know about their defense, but their drop back pass game, I think, is their weakness. It kind of came through for him yesterday, so that's to give him great confidence. You know, there's still a lot of stuff going on here for these games. Seattle wins, they'll go to number one. Right. If uh, Green Bay loses on Monday night to Minnesota, then all of a sudden that the whole seating can change. But the thing that I will say is that I don't necessarily know that there's a more disappointing team in the NFC side of things than the Rams. Mm. And when you look forward to how much money they have spent on players that are still going to be on this roster and who's leaving this roster next year, they might not be the same. This window may be closing on the Rams. Mm. Hey, folks, we like to uh, note the passing of a very special friend of ours at the NFL today. Many of you may remember Austin Denton, the young man we got to know back in 2016 through our partnership with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Austin dreamed of becoming a sportscaster, and we got to experience his exceptional talent firsthand. He joined us as a special correspondent covering his favorite team, the Broncos, interviewing then-coach Gary Kubiak before joining us in studio to break it all down. First diagnosed with cancer at the age of two, his bravery and fearlessness were evident throughout his life. You know, Austin had an unbelievable spirit who inspired everyone he met. Austin, you were a special young man who will be missed but never forgotten. Amen. And folks, we here at CBS Sports and the NFL today send our thoughts and prayers to Austin's family and loved ones. And we like to dedicate, dedicate that is, today's show to the memory of our good friend. <laughs> Andy Dalton of the Bengals and the Dolphins, Ryan Fitzpatrick, getting ready to face off today. Two quarterbacks who could very well be on the move this offseason. Something that is all too familiar to journeyman Fitzpatrick, but not so much for another group of quarterbacks who could be making a change of address next season as we go inside the pregame HQ delivered by Domino's. I am going to retire. Uh, this is not an easy decision. Honestly, it's the hardest decision of my life. Reset. Intercepted, and things are disintegrating for the Colts. If the Panthers take a bye to Cam for next year, it's going to save them 19 million bucks. It's going to happen. Carolina will lose its sixth in a row. Rivers, middle of the field, picked off. That's way too many of those for number 17. Winston throws, touchdown. Winston is hotter than a match. It's intercepted. It's the fifth interception of the day. Out is Marcus Mariota. In is Ryan Tannehill. Boy, Ryan Tannehill, impressive ever since he took over the starting role. 
Couldn't read it either. So, just in time for the holidays, GMs and coaches are putting together their wish list for their next quarterback. And take a look, folks, some pretty interesting names who could be available. Names like Jameis Winston, who our guy Nate got to see up close and personal in calling the Texans game, Texans and the Bucks. Your thoughts? Yeah, I've always said that Jameis Winston has that wow factor. He'll make an amazing throw. Wow, Jameis. Wow. Then he'll make a bad decision. It's wow, Jameis. <laughs> and he forces the ball downfield. You know, we saw the one to Bradley Roby, and then Eric Reed reads it correctly. Right there, Jonathan Joseph, as he comes in on that post route because he throws it slightly inside. And then to end the game, he has a chance to win it. And he throws an interception late in the game. Now, Jameis Winston, I don't want to be an apologist for him. Even though he makes bad decisions, I saw enough good throws in that game with the fractured thumb, two top receivers out. Yep. That means they would keep them there. At least in my opinion, that's what I see. I think he should stay there because I don't think any other 31 other teams want a piece of all these turnovers. And, Coach, you know what turnovers do to coaches. <laughs> it gets them fired. Yeah. But I, I do see that there was significant improvement under Bruce Arians. There's no question about that. And I think whatever it takes to keep him there for another one or two years just to see if he figures out how not to turn the ball over would be the smartest thing for him and his agent because the other 31 teams are not going to want to deal with this. You know, Boomer, Nate, you kind of said there are a couple of things you worry about is, is what he picks out, where to throw it, decision making, but the in, being inaccurate. That is something he's been his whole career. He was that way at Florida State. He overthrew everybody. Just like yesterday, he underthrows, uh, underthrows very few times. It's always an overthrow. But Jameis is going to stay there. Why? Because Bruce Arias doesn't bring a quarterback in and develop a system for them. You must fit his system. And Jameis fits it perfectly because who throws it down the field more than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? That's what Jameis is. So he gets it down there. Who do he have? Peyton Manning. He coached him. They were throwing it bombs away. And then he, then he had Andrew Luck, Carson Palmer, right. Jameis Winston. Right. They all fit the mold. And you know what? You're right. He has a quarterback-friendly system. But I would also say I've seen him for five years. There's a body of work. He's a turnover machine. You cannot drink the juice, Nate. You cannot drink well, the I juice. Drink and you know you saw it. You know, it's only one slight problem. Decision-making inaccuracy. Oh, just two little things we can straighten out. You know what I mean? You really can't. And honestly, I think Jameis Winston, he does. He enamors you. He's much see TV, but you know what? I think for, for Bruce Arians, if you want to go to the playoffs, if you want to build something, they got a good defense. I would say run the ball more. Get someone in there where it's Teddy Bridgewater or something. I, you, if you're going to sign him, it better be short term. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. You know, it has to be short term. Right. And I say franchise, but but at some point, he is a turnover machine. He's proven it year in year out. And you're right, it gets coaches fired. That's right. Mm. Phil, wow. did I see that graphic correctly of the quarterbacks yeah, that? that Tom Brady's name was on the list, possibly available next season? Yeah, great. You know, everybody's talking about that. Oh, he might move to a team because he's on the last year of his contract. Look, Tom Brady, what we saw yesterday, he could play for five more years if they play that way. Run the football, protect him, get rid of it. A lot of misdirection, short throws, and easy reads for him. So Tom Brady's in the perfect spot right now. I think he'll resign with the Patriots. Absolutely. Robert Kraft will not let this man leave. He's 43 years old. You're not going to go to a new system. Why? You, you're, the, you're the GOAT. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. So, so go a lot in class. Tom, just stay there, please. I yes. mean, it's just been so much fun watching yes, you guys, yes. and you guys have had so much success. The grass isn't greener in other places. The only thing I will say about all these other quarterbacks, I just hope that Andrew Luck comes back and plays. And I want that to be known, because I he's still young enough, still good enough, and still could be one of the best in the NFL if he really wanted to come back and play. Yeah, I'm in full agreement with Tom Brady. He's not going anywhere. You're the GOAT. Stick with the same team oh. and go down as a legend, as a Patriot. Yeah. You know, he's got the best coach in football as well. So There's going to need to be a brick wall in front of Andrew Luck, though. I mean, he took a beating, did he not, boom? Oh, they do have a brick wall there in Indianapolis. Well, hey. Besides well, come back and play there. Well, <laughs> they finally got one at what point in his career. But anyway, we'll <laughs> keep over. the conversation going here. But with kickoff just about a half hour our way. Time now to set the scene in your game as we take you out first on the field, delivered by FedEx with the latest news and updates on your matchup. <clears throat> and later, you'll see Derek Carr and the Raiders taking on Phillip Rivers and the Tigers or Nate's Lions in the Mile High City taking on the Broncos. That comes your way at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, right here on CBS. 
And you, All right, folks, and with the Lions having lost seven in a row, this is not the season that Detroit or its head coach, Matt Patricia, had envisioned, Boom. You know, we have eight starting quarterbacks today that are going to be rookies, and Drew Locke happens to be one of them in this game. And yeah. maybe the maybe maybe the Broncos have found their quarterback of the future. It's mm. hard to tell. I like you know, it. the game against ten, uh, Houston, he played great, but then the next game he came back and was a turnover machine. So today against this Lions defense, he needs to have a strong finish here at the end of the season to give them a little bit of an idea of whether or not they have their quarterback of the future in the, uh, Denver. Yeah, when it comes to my former team, the Detroit Lions, it's a big picture for me. Matt yeah. Patricia came in. He was trying to do things the Patriot way. And from the people that I talked to in the media, players that played with him, they said that his methods didn't really land right away because you're trying to bring New England to Detroit. And if you're in Detroit, you better bring Detroit to Detroit. But I know he brought in guys like Flowers and Amendola. Now they can kind of let his message resonate through the locker room because they can repeat it to the players that might be hesitant. I feel like this, these last couple of games and then this offseason, they're going to help him kind of get his team back next season. I mean, they got some offensive weapons, and Matthew Stafford has not played for most of this year, so he'll get a pass from that standpoint. But I'm going to tell you, if I'm Matt Patricia, I sit there and look at the stats, and they're an indicator. They're 31st in the National Football League, and I'm a defensive Ooh, coach. A lot that's of not a good sign. So, yeah. you know, if he gets another year, great, but there's got to be some significant improvement on the defensive side of the ball. Well, they, they got rid, rid of Jim Caldwell, who went 9-7 or seven or better three out of the four years. They, they took a gamble to get really better. It has not worked with Matt Patricia. And I ask you, Tell me the building blocks besides the quarterback on that football team. Mm. That's a good question there, Phil. You ask a lot of questions. <laughs> I'm going to ask you this. Is Juju Smith healthy? Because he's back on the field. Don't talk so long, I couldn't talk. <laughs> There's MVP favorite Lamar Jackson. He's looking to continue the record-breaking season and to extend the Ravens franchise best winning streak to 11 games. But there's more to the Ravens than just Lamar and their high-powered offense. Bill, uh, Coach, I'm sure you're going to talk about the defense. Yeah, you're talking about the other side of the ball, Phil. They complement that offense so well. In this 10-game winning streak, their last loss being at Cleveland, they've only given out 15.7, second in the National Football League. But here's one. How about just eight passing touchdowns? Best in the National Football League. And why do they do it that way? Because they love the blitz 50% of the time. This is a team that gets in your face. They play aggressive, just like the offensive side of the ball. When you watch these guys play, what do you see? Line man-to-man -man defense. People at the line of scrimmage. Earl Thomas is in the back. Marcus Peter, Jimmy Smith, and Marlon Humphrey. Three dynamic corners. Chucky Clark right there, Matt Judon. Man to man. So you try to keep guys in to, to protect. But if your guy blocks, LJ Ford says he blocks, I go to the quarterback. So they come after you. They attack with you. Then they give you different looks. They like to disguise a big part of that in making sure you have a coordinated defense. Look at everybody's up in there, right? They're, oh, all of a sudden it's three on one side, one on the other side. We have people blocking dropping into passing lanes, it doesn't look as wide open as it did before. So they give you the element of disguise. And look at this. This is zero coverage. There's no safety back there. They play this more than anybody in the National Football League because they got corners that can cover. Earl Thomas is right there. And here Marcus Peters, the best cover corner, I think, in the National Football League. Tremendous technique, tremendous style. It allows them to take chances and to play aggressively when you have corners like that, Phil, and they really do kind of match their offense. They attack. Two guys, dude, to this defense that really helped you said one Marcus Peters Give me a quick thing. Why has it changed their defense so much with him? Because they can play man-to-man. -man. They got Marlon Humphrey. They got Jimmy Smith. And now Marcus Peters gives them a chance to match up. And then Earl Thomas... What He's a freelance safety who understands where the weaknesses are in the defense. He's not afraid to take chances. And when you talk about it, there's another huge game today in Philly where the Cowboys will square off against the Eagles with the top spot in the NFC East on the line. This run defense has been solid. This defense is too good now. So explosive. What a throw. Sunday, it is the Eagles at the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, 
baby, the NFC East. Welcome to the Implication Station. This is the Playoff Express. Cowboys, Eagles, what's up, boy? It's the money game. You know, it's the money game for Dak. You win this game, you win the NFC East. If you're Dallas, if you're the Eagles and you're Carson Wentz and you win this game, you control your own destiny and you have to win next week. But here's the thing about Carson Wentz. The last two weeks against the Giants and the Redskins in the fourth quarter, he's completed 80% of his passes. He's thrown four touchdowns, no interceptions. He's not going to have Lane Johnson. He's not going to have Jordan Howard. He's not going to have Nelson Aguilar. I don't really know how he's doing it. Mm. But today, I think he's going against a much tougher opponent. And the Cowboys are coming off their best game of the season last week against the Rams. That's right. And what they do against Jared Goff, they made him uncomfortable in the pocket. It was two sacks, six QB hits. And that's exactly what they're going to try to do up against Carson Wentz. They're going to smother those wide receivers yep. and see if he can throw in small windows. We'll see what Carson Wentz can do up against the Dallas Cowboys defense. But what about Monday night, though? Boom. I got we got the things. Green Bay Packers in the Minnesota. Minnesota Vikings. You know what my concern is for the Vikings? No Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook, it's not just about the rushing attack that he brings to this team. It's about what they do off of that rushing attack. I mean, they're one of the best play action teams in the business. 14 touchdowns on play action plays for Kirk Cousins. Right. That's tied for the most. No Dalvin Cook. Can they still be as effective? Boom. I got a Monday night stat for you. You're not going to like if you're a Viking fan uh -huh. or a former Viking player. Kirk Cousins, he's 0-8 on Monday nights. Oh. And by the way, Aaron Rodgers, 5-0 in his last five games on Monday night. Mm. You know, this game really for Kirk Cousins comes down to why did we sign you in the first place? I feel like you've said that before. <laughs> I've been saying it for the last year and a half. <laughs> he's got to win this game. It's at home. It's against the Green Bay Packers. If he doesn't have Dalvin Cook, he's got to do a lot more than if he did have Dalvin Cook. So I, I just say this pressure never ends on Kirk Cousins in Minnesota because the last time we saw them in the playoffs, who was their quarterback? Case Keenum. Yep, but that's why he gets paid the big bucks, just like you here on the show. Oh, that's right. All right, Le'Veon Bell. He's going up against his former team. He came in wearing yellow, but he's wearing green right now. Let's see if he can get in the red zone and make some plays. We got a lot of green to go there. The NFL Today is sponsored by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. And by Jeep Big Finish Event. End the year with a great deal. In the spirit of giving this holiday season, Baltimore Ravens players Mark Ingram and Willie Sneed took 25 elementary school kids on a $125 holiday shopping spree, an event paid for through Ingram's charitable foundation. And speaking of the Ravens, well, here we go. We got Mark Andrews, tight end, good blocker, and a good pass catcher. He has eight touchdown catches so far this year. All right, guys, how about Nick Chubb? He's looking to become the first Browns running back to lead the league in rushing since the great Leroy Kelly did it back in 1968. This season, Dolphins receiver Devontae Parker has shown sticky hands like Peter Parker, has almost 1,000 yards, one of the bright spots on this Miami team. Oh, uh, long-time Steeler receiver. Hines Ward is now an assistant coach of the New York Jets, and he says if we beat those Steelers today, I want myself a Gatorade shower. Oh. Uh, and you know what? Hey, folks, congratulations to Coach Bill Cower as one of the third hey. finalists for the Pro Football Hall of Fame Centennial class. As a matter of fact, that list of 38 will be pared down to 15. Coach is one of eight coaching finalists, but boy, does he deserve to be there. Well, he does. First off, Coach, how many games did you win as a head coach? 161. How many playoff uh, appearances did you have? Uh, 10. 10? <laughs> Are you at <laughs> the Super Bowl? You took two, two, two teams in the Super Bowl? Yeah. Yep. You should have been in the Hall of Fame already, but mm. congratulations. Especially given the rotating yes. quarterbacks that he had to deal with there. Well, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we all know Coach. We all love Coach, and Coach respects the game, and he always mm. did it the Big right time. way, and that's the thing that we appreciate the most about you, Coach. You've already, like, I agree with Phil again. I can't believe I'm doing this twice in the same day. <laughs> but, yes, you should have already been in the Hall of Fame, and good luck, and uh, hopefully you get there this time. Yeah, Coach respects the game, but more importantly, the players, the mm. coaches, yeah. the people within the game respect you like we do, Coach. Absolutely. Congrats, man. We hope I, you're in. I, I can't I, wait for the party. I, I, <laughs> let, me, let me just say this. I was with a family of the Pittsburgh Steelers for 15 years, the classiest people in the National Football League. I've been with the CBS family now for 13 years. Mm. And you know what? It's the same class. It's, it's a class organization. They allow us to do our thing up here. Mm -hmm. I could not imagine being in any other place. And right here on Sundays. Get all choked up. You know, I, well, you know, here oh. on Sundays, because I get to have, you know what? <laughs> I love you, man. I respect this guy. Oh, <laughs> Do you really? I, I respect this guy. You know what? Right. 
You know, and these two knuckleheads right here, you know, <laughs> I, I, I've gone against them, but I respect the heck out of them. And JB, mm. you are the best in the business. You keep mm. us all together. Thank no you, man. And thank you guys there. Appreciate that. Wow. Nice. wow. Yeah, just give it a light moment here. We know why you won so much in Pittsburgh. Why is that? Because here, just in picture, such a sore loser. <laughs> <laughs> that probably propelled you. To On get it done. Monday night, we witnessed an all time great performance by a future uh, Hall of Famer, Drew Brees. Folks, he set the NFL record for career touchdowns, currently at 541. Tom Brady just behind him and tied with Peyton Manning at 539. Not bad. Not a bad career for a guy. You know what? Because we're always talking about the other big names. Drew still doesn't get enough credit. Well, we always talk about the brightest new thing in the league. It's Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, or it's Tom Brady, mm -hmm. or whoever wins the Super Bowl. But Drew Brees, his work ethic is undeniable. It's tremendous. His professionalism is awesome. And I'll tell you something else he does not get credit for. He is an outstanding athlete. He can move around, works the pocket. Still at the age he is, we saw the other night, he broke out of the pocket a few times, made some plays. He can still get And you were just with him not too long yeah, ago. Yeah, you know what? As good a person as he is on the field, he's a better person mm. off the field. I mean, as a father and as a, as, a, as a husband, this guy represents the very best that the National Football League has to offer. And what he's done in that community is amazing. And the other part of this guy that you have to think about, he is so durable. Mm. It's a pocket passer mm. that doesn't get hurt. Yeah. So he has a great feel for the game. And then you're talking about ultra-competitive. Man, this guy, even with his kids and flag football, he's doing what he can <laughs> to win the game. So yeah. he is, I thought of doubt, one of the all-time greats has ever played the game. And more for, to me, as a person and as a player. Mm. You know what I love about Drew Brees is that he's done it with every type of skill player. We've seen him yeah. with the big Jimmy Graham type. We've yeah. seen him with tall, lanky wide receivers, short, fast guys, big backs, small backs. And he has adjusted his style of play, how he delivers the ball, depending on the different talent that surrounds him. And that right there shows that he pays attention to who's on his team. Yep. And it's not about the guys trying to figure me out, but me as the leader of this team, figuring out how to make these guys better. And he does that week in and week Think out. Think about that. He's about six foot tall, and he navigates that pocket about as well as anybody ever has in the league. He's super competitive. That's the thing that drives him. Yeah. And I, I also would think that he should send a thank you note to the Miami Dolphins for failing him in his physical. <laughs> he got hurt after playing for San Diego because that ultimately paired him with Sean Payton. And as Phil has said, yeah. oftentimes, he's got the perfect coach yeah. with the per perfect quarterback. And I'll tell you right now, for me, who played the position, this guy is right there at the top with every single one of them. I, I can't really differentiate who's the greatest, this, that, and the other thing. He is right there on that same line. I yeah. don't care what anybody says. Yep. Hey, to the three of you especially, let's find out if Coach really does enjoy working with Nate Burleson. Because <laughs> guess what? Before we get to this week's picks, oh. let's have a look at our standings. After oh. several weeks at the top, God. Boomer is in last place. Mm. No way. I'm tied oh, I'm for last. is leading the way. But, but, but you don't need to say this, uh, JB. We, I always, to me, have to have a body of <laughs> work. His body, this guy's been in last place for two years. Oh, God. Nate has. So okay. I'm just telling you, he's right now... There's this. This, could, care about this, this could be a free fall. I mean, even today, I mean, right now. So you know, he, he's already he was struggling this morning making a pick. Well, listen, man, I, I gave you a kiss early in the show because you, you <laughs> kissed my behind. You're staring at my rear end all season long in these picks. Uh, but here's the thing. Let's get to these picks, JB. Time now, nature, right, for the NFL pick presented by Allstate. A perfect time for some wow. more uh, mayhem upset specials. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Jets over the Steelers. Wow. I feel like wow. Gase and Le'Veon, they want to do a little something, a little bit of a revenge wow. game for Lev. JB, I'm not. In last place, I'm tied with Phil for third place. Okay. Wait, but right. what, what, what is that? Is that is, is, is I am it, I'm taking the Dolphins over the Bengals. You know, I'm taking the Green Bay Packers over the Minnesota Vikings Ooh. on Monday night. Ooh. Yeah. I'm gonna take the Jets over the Steelers because of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I was yeah, gonna yeah, mention yeah, Professor Tony Cashman, who is his writer, Nate's writer. Third place is still last and tied for last. Hey folks, hey, don't you worry about it. Is just a few minutes away. Oh, Phil's so. now telling me not to worry oh, about so. it. So. Boomer is telling me I can't figure out the map of that. But hey, take it away. The NFL Today is presented by the Jeep Big Finish event. End the year with a great deal. And our director, Bob Matina, wants me to remind you that later you'll see Derek Carr and the Raiders taking on Phillip Rivers and the Chargers or the Lions, Nate's old team, in the Mile High City to take on the Broncos. That comes your way for Eastern 1 Pacific right here on CBS as we welcome you back 
to the NFL today in game day delivery presented by Amazon. Well, the Lions officially placed their franchise quarterback, Matthew Stafford, on IR this week. But it seems like the Broncos may have found their QB of the future. Yeah, we were talking about that a little bit earlier. Drew Locke has had a little bit of an up and down thing here. But the one thing we all have seen, he's got the arm. Yeah. And he definitely has the accuracy. And the ball's tight coming out of his hand. So that's good for the Denver Broncos. For the Oakland Raiders and the L.A. Chargers, Chargers probably going to have a new quarterback next year. I think Philip Rivers is going to be playing somewhere else. And I think for Derek Carr, this is really important for him to play strong here <clears throat> the last two games of the season simply because, you know, I don't necessarily know that John Gruden believes that he's the guy going forward, which is hard for me to believe given the, the amount of money that they're paying him. Yeah, it's hard not to have a little bit of a nostalgic feeling when it comes to watching the Oakland Raiders playing their last home game in their stadium. And then also Phillip Rivers, we're not going to see him as a charger anymore. I think we're all in agreement there. Now, when it comes to my Lions, I just have to say this. I feel like Kenny Galladay got robbed for the Pro Bowl. He's one of the top young wide receivers yeah. in this league. Another 1,000-yard season, he's going to head towards 10 touchdowns. So he's one of the bright spots, even even though this was another up and down season for my Detroit Lions. And TJ Hawkins is another one. I, I think offensively, they got some weapons. I think yeah. it's the defensive side, which we would think we map Patricia's uh, strength that I think they really have to talk about. But I think when you go back, I agree. I think Drew Locke, along, along with the accuracy and the arm strength, he's an athlete. Yeah, he's this guy is a yeah. really good athlete. So I really do think they may have got something here, but it's, it is a small period of time. And I think when you look at Phillip Rivers, I know I, I, I think he wants to open up the new stadium. And I do think that he would sit there and talk about his role as he sees it. Um, he's a guy that, you know, I think, it's, again, this is the same team he's been with. And he, I don't see him at this stage of his career wanting to go to another team. So I think either he's going to play with the L.A. Chargers next year or he's going to retire. Mm. I don't think you'll see him on another football team. I don't think so. Uh, he's too competitive not to play. Phil, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. But, you know, my big thing is where would he go? But, you know, when you talk about Phillip <clears throat> Rivers and Anthony Lynn, well, we'll – Take it from here. So we understand that they're having some technical issues on Miami and Cincinnati. So with that audience, we're bringing you here in the Studio 43 to talk a little football. But we'll get you back there as soon as those issues are ironed out. Complete your thoughts. Well, you know, with Phillip Rivers, I look at Anthony Lynn, the, you know, the head coach. What's he want to do? He's a run ex running back. He wants to run the football, and yes. their defense is getting better. Right. So it wouldn't shock me to see him go out there and try to get a quarterback that can play a role a little bit better that fits that football team. I do agree with Boomer and him just real quick about Drew Locke. Hey, big. Great arm. He was a highlight reel in, in college, and we've seen some really good spots from him. Noah Fant, two young wide receivers. You know, the Broncos actually got a few people you can look at. Justin Simmons, the safety on defense, to go, man, there's something to build here. They might have, you know, caught caught lightning in a bottle a little bit with some of their picks. You, you, no, go ahead, Bill. I was going to say, talk about the Miami-Cincinnati game since we got right. that crowd coming mm -hmm. to join us mm -hmm. right now. That, I mean, you're talking about two teams that need to have stability at the quarterback position. Obviously, Joe Burrow is looking to be the first pick in the draft, possibly the Cincinnati, as we yeah. talked about a week ago. But I look at Brian Flores, what he's mm. done down there. This football team, he has impressed me. I know the record in itself speaks for itself, but they mm. play hard for him. Yeah, I think he's a – I love his passion on the sideline. Um, I think he is a good coach moving forward, but they have to address the quarterback situation. And there's Brian right there. I mean, I, he, here's, he's the one guy that comes from the, uh, yeah. the Bill Belichick tree that's got a little bit of a Emotion about him on the side. Hey, but that. Bill, but Bill Carroll, let me ask you. I mean, that's right. got to be awfully difficult dealing with a mindset where you're losing so often, but you're saying, I respect and appreciate what I'm seeing the players are do I in think, spite of that. I think that's beyond that right now. I think at the end of the season, you got something to build off of. And I think what they're doing is they're getting a feel for Brian Flores. He's mm. invested, man. He's, he's all in. Yeah. You know what? When you're playing for a guy who's all in, mm -hmm. you're going to go all in. Hey, they, you know, they kept Fitz at uh, starting quarterback, so you know what, they're all in to win. Because they're he wants to win. To win. Yeah. Now, speaking of uh, teams looking for quarterbacks, let's bring it back to Philip Brewers for a second. Let me throw this out there. How about the Indianapolis Colts? Frank Reich, his former coach, play, played underneath them. He had a good season underneath them with the Chargers. I know their plan A might yes. be Andrew Luck, Phillip Rivers, maybe. That could Not be a landing deal. spot. How about the Carolina Panthers? He did play at NC State. Yes, hey, how about Phil Simms coming back to play? Yeah, yeah, how about that? Yeah, I can hold a clipboard, coach. All right, hey. Oh, oh, no, you can't. Hey. Coach, I love you, man. <laughs> we'll see you later.